Is Yellowstone gonna blow? And according to the USGS, the eruption follows an increase in earthquake activity. <sighs> Tourists are stepping on one of the biggest time bombs on the globe as they wander between the Yellowstone's 300 active geysers and take pictures in front of thousands of bubbling, boiling mud pods and hissing steam vents. Geophysicists have been perplexed by the park's gigantic supervolcano for years, but a study team has finally made a finding by using seismic technology to explore its depths. Currently, many are speculating as to whether or not this ticking time bomb will explode. If it does, will it erupt in our lifetimes? And why is a section of Yellowstone the size of Chicago pulsing? Join us as we explore how Yellowstone National Park officials just announced that a chilling discovery was is made inside Yellowstone. In the center of Yellowstone National Park in northwest Wyoming, a seething caldera is all that remains of the massive volcanic explosion that took place 640,000 years ago, a geological paradise of boiling pools and erupting gazes, all of which are fueled by magma and extremely hot fluids that are churning in the rock below the surface can be found in the 3,472 square mile park around the caldera. One of these areas, the Norris Geyser Basin to the northwest of the caldera has more than 500 hydrothermal features. Although these erratic gazes and pools frequently change from day to day, a much more profound transformation has also been occurring. A region centered on the basin has been exploding and contracting by several inches in a regular burst for more than 20 years. In a region like Yellowstone that experiences frequent volcanic eruptions, it might be difficult to pinpoint the exact causes of any specific movement. However, a recent scientific investigation may help to explain why this region of land has been breathing in and breathing out. Researchers looked at decades' worth of satellite-based radar and GPS data in order to make an educated guess as to what may have occurred beneath Norris Geyser Basin's surface, based on the changes above. Fluids locked inside a magma body that intruded beneath Norris in the late 1990s broke out and flooded through the rocky maze above them. As the fluids were trapped and the pressure grew, the ground would inflate. When the fluids were allowed to escape to other places, the ground would deflate. Currently, magma-derived fluids may only be a mile or two below the Earth's surface. To be clear, the new study does not imply that the supervolcano, whose last eruption created the Yellowstone caldera 640,000 years ago, is any more likely to erupt now. Instead, since March 2018, Steamboat Geyser in the park, the tallest active geyser in the world, has been spewing at a record-breaking rate. These tectonic motions can provide a light on the situation. The alterations below Norris, according to researchers, may potentially pose a slightly increased danger of hydrothermal explosions in the basin. The geology of Yellowstone is complex and enigmatic, making subsurface investigation particularly challenging. However, scientists agree that the injection of a substantial body of magma and the fluids that escaped during in the eruption can account for the rising and sinking of the ground. The scientist in charge at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory of the U.S. Geological Survey, Michael Poland, who wasn't involved in the new research, states that we're only just beginning to understand just how dynamic Norris Geyser Basin is. The three-dimensional imaging of a large magma plume, or pipe beneath the Yellowstone, that is responsible for transporting lava and extremely high temperatures up through the Earth's mantle, was a remarkable discovery in addition to the unexpected caldera deformation. The University of Utah researchers used a wide network of seismic sensors in and around the area to investigate how seismic waves react when they pass through various materials beneath the park. Using 3D seismic tomography data, they located a large 3,600 cubic mile banana-shaped body that is about a half mile deeper and contains a partially molten rock. This is what is referred to as Yellowstone's magma chamber. Even deeper and more crucial in terms of plate tectonic theory is a plume of magma that feeds the shallower magma system, rising through the upper mantle of the Earth from the northwest and descending 400 miles below. Based on recent seismic data, this important new conclusion refutes previous assertions that Yellowstone does not have a plume. Another oddity is that the 3D image shows that the plume originates 125 miles from a key upper mantle transition zone, rather than 1,700 miles from Yellowstone National Park. Beneath the Montana-Idaho border, the oldest thermal region in Yellowstone is Norris Gaza Basin which contains thermal features that date back 115,000 years. With a temperature of 459 degrees Fahrenheit at a depth of about 1,000 feet below the surface, it's also the hottest. An illustration of how fast and unpredictably this searing portion of Yellowstone may change is the nearby steamboat geyser. In the past, the 400-feet-tall geyser has only occasionally erupted, with lapses between large eruptions ranging from 4 days to 50 years. However, steamboat has been erupting up to once per week since March of last year. In 2018, the geyser erupted 32 times, breaking the previous record. The following year, it erupted 48 times. 
The public has taken notice of this mercurial geyser hyperactivity, but scientists are more mesmerized by the dramatic shaking of the basin itself. A dynamic area is the Norris Geyser Basin. Between 1996 and 2004, a region of 18 miles long increased by 4.7 inches, but between 2005 and 2013 it decreased by 2.8 inches. The area then rapidly started to rise once more in late 2013 and early 2014, at a pace of 5.9 inches per year, the highest rate of uplift ever observed within Yellowstone National Park. The seemingly inexorable upward movement was abruptly stopped in March 2014 by a magnitude 4.9 earthquake that struck Norris Geyser Basin. The ground gradually shifted between sinking and rising until the beginning of 2019. In comparison to 20 years ago, the basin has migrated so much that it is now 5 inches higher. What therefore is the root of all this confusion? Increased scientific monitoring has shown significant changes in Yellowstone's enormous subterranean volcanic system. The system is centered on a sizable caldera that is renowned for producing enormous volcanic eruptions that are geologically unusual. The Norris Geyser Basin upheaval is thought to have started between 96 and 2001, when magma surged slightly under 9 miles under the surface. The deformation of the basin was monitored using radar and GPS information from satellites. Just outside the newest caldera of the supervolcano's northwest rim, the basin is located on the Norris Mammoth Corridor, a network of faults and vents. Between 1996 and 2004, a magmatic intrusion triggered an uplift event, and when the magma cooled, dissolved fluids bubbled out of it. The magma body's internal pressure was lowered as a result of this process, which led to its deflation like a leaky balloon. This mechanism probably caused the ground to drop again between 2005 and 2013. Since then, as a result of the escaping fluid becoming sporadically trapped in pockets beneath layers of rock, the ground has been rising irregularly. It has been difficult for scientists to recognize and record their cycle of magnetism and hydrothermal activity. The team hypothesizes that magma-derived fluids are currently present just below the surface of Norris Geyser Basin. Numerous hydrothermal explosion craters in the region date back thousands of years. They are the product of geologic pressure cookers of constrained scalding water that violently depressurize and flash boil into steam. If the rock splits, an almost impossible event to foresee, major explosions are uncommon. But Norris Geyser Basin might soon witness a new boom. If fluids have accumulated close to the basin's surface, hydrothermal explosions may be a little more likely to occur. The rocky plumbing networks, however, are extraordinarily intricate, and Gizurin claims that tiny noticeable changes constantly affect the likelihood of a detonation. Due to the distant changes of additional explosion, the team does not suggest excluding tourists from the region. The USGS says it is highly improbable that there will be an eruption in the next few thousand years. According to Utah scientists, the likelihood is 1 in 700,000, or roughly the same as your chances of being struck by lightning. But when it does blow, it will most likely alter the course of history. Mount St. Helens was a picnic in comparison to Yellowstone's past. In 1980 when it buried Washington State with an ash deposit the size of Lake Michigan, Yellowstone's noise, even greater than Mount Pinatubo, which erupted in the Philippines in 1991. Open your history books to 1815 to gain a better understanding of the effects of Yellowstone's previous eruptions. At that time, Mount Tambor erupted, sending miles of debris into the air and instantly killing about 10,000 Indonesians. Some climatologists suggest that its dust may have blocked sunlight globally, cooling the air, and sending Earth's climate into a chilly phase that gave the year 1816, the nickname, Year Without a Summer. It might have caused cold crop failures in North America and Europe. 36 cubic miles of debris were blown into the sky by Tambor. According to the USGS, Yellowstone has dwarfed it by at least three times. The impacts of another big caldera forming explosion in Yellowstone would be felt all across the world. The world's climate would be radically altered. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more.